Okay, so you've got low back pain, you've had it for a while, or maybe it just came on and it's really bad. What should you do? Should you be resting? Should you walk it off? Do you need to go to your doctor? Let's talk about that in today's episode. Remember, this is part six of an ongoing series on everything you need to know about low back pain. Please leave your questions in the comments about low back pain because I'm creating an evolving course that's going to become a library of information based on what you want to know about low back pain. So ask me questions. You want the notes? Go download them on my website. Okay, you have low back pain, what should you do? Doctors have what are called clinical practice guidelines, and here are all the references for these. And basically all the guidelines kind of agree on the same principles for rehab. So we're going to follow this, and I'm summarizing this as though it's just one big guideline. So as I go over these guidelines, you might notice that the things that the guidelines actually tell doctors to do for their patients are quite the opposite of what many doctors end up actually doing. These guidelines tell doctors that they should be offering reassurance to their patients and teaching them that they are going to be okay. But many doctors actually do the opposite. They tell them, oh, your back is all screwed up and only I can fix it. They tell you it's dangerous to use it. The clinical practice guidelines tell doctors they should be encouraging patients to stay active and go exercise, even if it hurts a little bit. But sadly, many doctors don't realize this and they tell people to go home and rest. You don't need to rest. These guidelines tell us that the first line of treatments should be this education and advice to remain active. Now, many doctors jump the gun on additional therapies and drugs and surgeries. So really first option needs to be advice and education and exercise. Now, if these aren't working, then we can use some adjunct therapies. These are things like um, spinal manipulation, massage, soft tissue work, uh, physiotherapy modalities, although they explicitly say not to do electrical stimulation or traction because they don't really work. But now the evidence is kind of changing on traction. Maybe it works for some people. The point is if they're doing like passive therapies, if a therapist is doing something with their hands or an instrument or something to you, then that is an adjunct therapy. Think of it kind of like a supplement, right? You don't just eat supplements and not eat real food. So the real food is the reassurance, the education, the exercise. But if it the supplement you know, if we want to spice that up with some adjunct therapies and get some passive therapies, chiropractors, physical therapists, massage therapists, acupuncturists, although many, many of the guidelines weirdly say not to do acupuncture. I'm not really sure why. The research seems to be really conflicting on that particular point. But basically the point is that you can use those things in addition to exercise and optimism and all of that. But you shouldn't just do passive therapies without doing active therapies. And then all the guidelines are fairly explicit on drugs, opiates, injections, and surgeries. These should, many of these ther things should just not be used. And most of these things should only be used as a last resort. You already tried everything else then it's okay to use a little bit of medication. And then this one might be a surprise for some people, but the guidelines say not to take x-rays or MRIs. Mainly this is because if we take an x-ray of your spine and we see that you have um, some disc degeneration or some, some degeneration in that area, and we do an MRI and we find out maybe there's a, a disc herniation, it's gonna freak you out and it really doesn't change your treatment. So you're still gonna exercise, you're still gonna maybe do some adjunct therapies. So that disc herniation doesn't change how we treat and it just freaks you out. So there's no reason to do it. In another video, I'll talk more about x-rays because a lot of people use x-rays to scare you and then offer you a bunch of treatment to correct what's wrong with your spine. Those people are charlatans. They're snake oil salesmen. Run away from them. Okay, next up, pain traffic light. So, okay, the first line of treatment is education and exercise. So here's your education on how to exercise. Well, how much pain is okay during exercise? How much pain can we tolerate during exercise and still say that it is safe pain. Well, if we use a pain traffic light, we just say that pain during exercise, green means go, yellow is technically okay to go, but you don't want anything sneaking up on you, and a red light means stop. And this will correspond to a pain rating scale here, one to 10. Uh, one is basically no pain, and a 10 is the worst pain that you've ever experienced or ever could imagine experiencing in your entire life. You need to go to the hospital, it's terrible. The green light is a one to a three, the yellow light is a four to a six out of 10, and then a seven out of 10 and above is where we say, okay, that's too much pain, Let's 
let's stop doing that activity. The only caveat to this is if you start doing, let's say you do squats and squats start to hurt your back, but it's a green light. And the more squats you do, then it starts getting kind of yellow and it gets kind of orange. Okay, we notice a trend. Let's try a different activity for today. Maybe lunges feel better or something else. Just go for a walk. Don't stop activity, but try to find something else that's a little bit better tolerated uh, by your back on that particular day. So along with the pain traffic light, we're gonna use a no worse principle. And all that says is that the pain traffic light tells us that during activity, we can determine how much pain is safe pain. And that is a good guideline as long as is not worse the next day or after your ex exercise. So you should be a little extra sore the next day, that's fine, but if it's a big spike, that's too much. Now don't panic, all that means is that you did a little bit too much too soon. You can still stay active, but let's just dial back the intensity for your next round of exercise. Now, a lot of people follow this old acronym RICE, which stands for rest, ice, compress, and elevate, but this is out of date. Don't do this. So guidelines on this continue to evolve, but the main thing here is that, yeah, you can do a little bit of protection and elevation. So a much better alternative here is peace and love. New sudden injuries need peace and love. So this is only only for sudden acute sort of onsets of, of pain or big flare-ups. So yeah, we can protect the area for the first few days. We can try and avoid some of the really painful activities, but you only need to do that for the first few days. And the same thing goes for elevation. Uh, we really only need to work on these things temporarily. Now, interesting, is that we avoid anti-inflammatories because we want that blood flow. We want that healing to take place. So we don't ice, we do not ice. I'll repeat, do not ice. It's going to delay healing in the acute onset, the sudden onset of pain or injury. So yes, you can use some compression if you'd like to. And then education here, education that your body is gonna take care of it, um, that your body knows how to heal itself and it's gonna do its best and you're gonna be okay. And then the love portion here is loaded. So we wanna return to normal activities. We want to load it up, hold some weights, do some exercise. We want to stay optimistic. That mindset really does make a difference in your recovery, uh, very legitimately. We want to vascularize it. So we need to do some cardio exercise, get that blood flowing. And general exercise here is going to stimulate joint proprioceptors and reduce your pain over time. So it's going to be really important to exercise. This might be a surprise. We don't want to be resting. We don't want to be icing. What's up with that? Well, turns out movement is medicine. So stay active. Now, eventually you're going to get to the point where pain is no longer the limiting factor, right? You're getting green and yellow lights from the pain traffic light, and it's not getting worse after exercise. So now your limiting factor eventually is going to be actual strength, right? And fatigue. At which point are we doing rehab or are we just doing normal exercise? Are we just training? Well, it's kind of in between. So we use something called rating of perceived exertion. And what this is, is a scale of one to 10. And all we're asking is how difficult difficult is this exercise while you're doing it? A 10 out of 10 would be you did an exercise so difficult that you failed in the middle of it because your muscles completely gave out on you. And of course, a zero is no effort. One of the big problems with most rehab is that we underload. We do not challenge people enough. We only give people gentle banded exercise or body weight exercise. But actually, rehab should be, again, back here, we saw load was a, an important part of healing. So we want to load it up. We want to be above 70% of your max effort. We want to be challenging you so that you actually get really pretty tired. And yes, you might feel sore the next day. As long as it's kind of a normal exercise soreness, that's all good. But we don't need to be challenging ourselves to failure. We don't need to be doing 100% of our maximum effort. So challenge yourself enough that you get stronger, but not so much that you overdo it. Remember, motion is lotion. Also, fun fact here, um, sports, interestingly, a lot of people are nervous that sports are going to cause herniations because you do a lot of rotation and things like that. But it turns out sports, when they study them, actually um, might protect against getting herniations by strengthening uh, the resilience of the tissues in the spine. So just a random fun fact. In the next video, we'll talk about what you should avoid when it comes to low back pain. As always, if you want the notes, download them on my website. See you in the next video.